Welcome everybody to our interview today. My name is Sarah Zastro and I am the Midland County Farm Bureau Vice President. I have with us Adam Suter from the Suter Agency with Farm Bureau and I am excited. We're going to talk a little bit today about Farm Bureau um, and also about auto insurance reform and this whole idea with the changes that happened on July 2nd. I think a lot of the news was focused on COVID and so we wanted to bring our expert in uh, to answer some questions questions that you all submitted. So that is really cool. And we are just happy to be here today. So thanks, Adam. I appreciate your, uh, your time. Yeah, absolutely. I, my pleasure. Uh, thanks a lot for having me. Um, I'm happy to be here. Can awesome. You know? Awesome. <laughs> um, okay, so first off, I just want to talk a little bit about Michigan Farm Bureau. So it was established in 1919 as the Michigan State Farm Bureau Executive Committee, uh, and their mission was to unite under a definite head of all other form farm organizations. So the Farm Bureau should not be considered just another farm organization, but the one, which is kind of interesting. And then in 1944, they dropped the word state from their name, and it became Michigan. Michigan Farm Bureau. So now its mission is to represent, protect, and enhance the business, economic, social, and educational interests of its members. Agriculture is one of Michigan's most important industries and impacts the lives of every Michigan resident. Your membership in Michigan Farm Bureau shows that you care where your food comes from and that you support the sustainable use of Michigan's resources. So for Michigan Farm Bureau, if you are a farmer, it works out really well because it helps you do a lot of things. It helps you protect your interest and the, the interest of Michigan's agriculture industry, helps you save money on lots of different areas with our member benefits, helps you stay up to date with current information on issues affecting the state agriculture industry, specifically those legal issues and issues with uh, policy and different things like that. It also gives you access to exclusive educational and professional developmental programs. I have taken full advantage of those and I can uh, say that they are, they are wonderful. Helps you find um, different opportunities to collaborate and network, um, to influence legislators and policymakers, which is also really, really important, especially right now. And of course, to educate the public on modern food and farming practices. Um, it also helps you to become the voice of Michigan agriculture. So as a member, you will be belonging to the state's largest general farm organization, and that is a really exciting thing. It creates a credible voice of Michigan agriculture, and our strength in numbers gives us an advantage and aids our ability in, eff in effectively impacting um, those issues that are so important to farmers. Now, if you're not a farmer, you might be thinking, okay, what's in it for me, right? But that is, that's okay. Michigan Farm Bureaus are, um, are not just active uh, for production farms, but they also help a variety of other industries that are infected, affected um, and surrounding agriculture. So that's really cool. So it, a Michigan agriculture touches all of us because it provides nutrition, healthy foods, um, conservation of our resources for future generations. And it also impacts all of Michigan's residents in those ways, which is really, really cool. So by joining the Michigan Farm Bureau, you show that you care about where your food comes from and support Michigan's critical agricultural industry. You and your Farm Bureau membership come with exclusive member discounts and savings that easily more than offset the annual membership dues. I I'm uh, so proud to be a part of Michigan Farm Bureau. I've learned so much, and I think that it um, has really been really beneficial to me as a farmer. Um, and now, the one thing that is really, really cool is that in 1949, Michigan Farm Bureau, their board of directors, which are all first-time farmers from across the state, decided to establish an insurance company of Michigan. And that's what we are almost better known for as Farm Bureau Insurance. And so that board of directors, um, is still created by full-time farmers from across the state, um, and, and that's where Adam comes in. So Adam is one of the agents, and he is uh, going to talk to us today about this auto insurance reform. Now, if you have any questions about Farm Bureau membership, whether you're a farmer in a related industry or not at all, feel free to comment below or shoot me a message. Um, I'm more than happy to do this, and we are hoping to grab some new members here. It's a great opportunity, and um, we love Farm Bureau and hope you do too.
So anyway, taking it to the, um, the auto insurance reform, Adam, tell us a little bit uh, about yourself. Sure. Uh, my name is Adam Suter, as you had mentioned. Um, my beautiful wife and uh, children, uh, we live in Freeland. Um, kids are all Freeland um, uh, school district students, and my oldest is a Saginaw Valley State University student. Um, we'll be finishing up here pretty quickly, and um, um, we are uh, Farm Bureau members, proud Farm, Farm Bureau members, and uh, proud to represent um, and provide for our family uh, by protecting the people uh, of Michigan from the risk of everyday life um, as a Farm Bureau uh, family-owned agency. Awesome. Awesome. I grew up in Freeland too. So that's kind of cool. Go, go Falcons. I did, although I didn't go to school there, but that's right. That's beside the point. Um, anyway. Okay. So, so talking about these auto insurance changes that went into effect on July 2nd, tell us a little bit about kind of why that happened and a little bit more about um, what just general everyday people need to know about those. Sure. So I guess high level, right? Michigan has always been uh, since 1973, a no fault uh, state in regards to auto insurance, um, which provided lifetime unlimited medical coverage. Uh, and those are for costs associated to, to an auto accident. Um, it's been great for those that have, you know, had uh, injuries or have been, you know, injured due to an auto accident, but it's also been a major factor in, in, and resulted in our auto insurance premiums in our state uh, being the sec second largest uh, monthly bill for most Michigan consumers. Um, so the, the main goal of the auto reform is, is to reduce this expense, right? Um, so the most important decision though that I think you know, everyone in Michigan, um, even those that maybe don't own a vehicle, I think the, the second uh, or the most important decision that they can make is to really review their specific coverage options and, and their needs for themselves and their family uh, with a with a trusted insurance advisor, um, so they understand um, the implications and and the changes. Um, you know, some of the things we'll talk about are again high level and uh, some of the basics um, surrounding the no fault um, auto insurance reform uh, here in Michigan. However, th there's many more um, intricacies and changes that are taking place that are going to affect many. Um, Michigan residents, right? And even people outside of our state can potentially be affected um, in, in the coverages that are, you know, now uh, have changed or may not be available any longer for, um, for people when they're in a tough spot and, uh, and you know, experiencing, you know, medical costs and, and whatnot associated to an auto accident. So, again, most important thing I think um, that everyone in the state of Michigan can do is, is really review and and go over their specific needs for themselves and their family with a trusted insurance advisor. Okay, yeah, that's really good to know. I know a lot of people have asked, you know, how will this affect my premiums? Um, and so uh, tell us a little bit about, you know, what we should do or what questions we should ask our advisor. Sure, so, I mean, potentially all Michigan uh, drivers, you know, could see a reduced premium. Now, the auto reform, it, what it essentially does is provide medical limits, um, options for what we refer to as PIP, uh, personal injury protection. That's the, the medical coverage portion of your auto insurance policy. So the lower the medical limit that, that you know, a, uh, a, a person selects, um, the greater the savings uh, that they'll see in premium. However, that still comes with some additional risk, right? Because you're, you're giving up coverage there. Um, so, um, yes, we, we should, um, see, but there's many other factors that affect your premium in your, in your policy as well. So just because your renewal is coming up and we're now in the auto reform, uh, doesn't necessarily mean you're automatically going to see a reduction in, in your rates. Okay. Gotcha. So, so that's really good to know. So we'll call our insurance agent, um, and, and then figure that out kind of with them. Um, yeah. So, so are we, is it fair to say that as our premiums go down, so does our coverage? That's a, that's a key comparison to make. Well, it, as far as the personal injury protection, um, yes. Um, if the, when we're speaking specifically to that, um, to the premium on your auto policy, um, being reduced specifically um, in relation to low, you know, selecting a, um, 
uh, electing a lower um, personal injury protection um, medical limit, um, yes, your coverage amount is reducing. And that varies, um, again, it's, it's such a case by case, uh, family by family, individual by individual um, um, choice, and, and uh, not only the selection that somebody can make um, on their auto insurance policy, but what they actually qualify for. Because it's, it's not, um, there's not just a standard across the board, right? Everyone doesn't have the same options for example, in Michigan, it depends on um, your age. Um, do you have dependents and, and children? And everyone in your whole household, um, for example, um, is, is everybody have Medicare parts A and B can make a difference uh, as to the medical limit options they have versus um, do you have health insurance at all, right? Or who is your health insurance provider and what exactly um, is, are, are they considered um, primary or coordinating, they may call it, right? Um, so it can be kind of overwhelming and confusing. And again, why I would say most importantly is to speak with a trusted advisor, whether it be your insurance agent uh, or if there's somebody else that you know you feel like you can go to. Okay, that the- that, that's super good to know, Adam. Thank you for that. So, so then with that being said, is it, f- or should we pay for both the personal protection uh, personal injury protection, that PIP, on both our health insurance and our auto insurance, or how does that work? So again, gonna gonna vary depending on each individual or family. Okay. Um, and for starters, their their health insurance um, is the health insurance, uh, which this varies across the board significantly. Is their is their health insurance um, considered coordinating or primary, if they will? In other words, do they pay first, right? Um, do they have a qualifying health insurance plan? Um, and there's, again, several factors that determine that, right? And that varies by each um, family and each uh, person's health insurance plan. Um, so that, that, again, is going to vary significantly for, for everybody um, in each family, um, if you will. But um, I would say, you know, it really, um, out of the majority of our clients, they've chosen uh, to maintain the unlimited PIP or unlimited medical, right, on their auto policy. Just in being that this is a a major overhaul, a major overhaul, right, a major change. Um, I guess, you know, we kind of still have to see the dust settle, right? Um, And I would say the majority of my clients, um, we've spoken with hundreds thus far, right, of of our clients. Um, And very few have, 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 chosen or opted to reduce or even opt out those that qualify to opt out of their personal injury protection uh, coverage on their auto. Um, very few have chosen that. Um, and I guess the, the concept is, you know, I, we, we really prefer our clients not to be the guinea pigs to, to make sure that, you know, they're going to be covered, you know, God forbid, on, on, on the worst day possible, the worst thing that can happen um, if those costs are going to be covered and they're going to be, you know, um, okay, that, that I'd rather, as well as my clients would, you know, the savings just wasn't significant enough to, to drop that coverage. Yeah, yeah, you'd rather be safe than sorry. And auto accidents, you never know when they're going to happen or anything like that. So, um, okay, thank you for that, Adam. And that's really, really good to know. Um, so, so what sort of questions should we have coming into that? Or what sort of questions should we ask both in preparing to meet with our advisor? Should we ask of our health insurance uh, and things like that? Yeah, absolutely. So that's a um, really good question. And um, what it, where I would start with is obviously scheduling some time um, to meet with your insurance advisor, um, contacting whether it be your HR department or um, your health insurance, um, um, you know, company representatives, um, whomever you, you're able to to get that information from from your health insurance provider as to what their stance is, what their coverage is, are they considered a qualifying um, health uh, provider, um, and are they considered um, primary or typically on the on the health insurance side they'll call it coordinating or uncoordinating. Um, so they should understand and know. And many uh, health insurance providers have already provided their um, their you know uh, insureds with. Um, what they call a, a coordination of benefits letter. If they haven't, they should, and, and each individual should contact um, their health insurance provider and ask for that. Uh, 
they should ask, you know, if I'm injured in, in a auto accident, um, do you guys pay, right? Does my health insurance cover that and pay for that? And they'll be provided, you know, with, with that answer. And they should also ask um, for a COB letter or co coordination of benefits letter. Um, um, and that is really the most important things to have, um, if at all possible, prior to meeting with their um, auto insurance advisor. Um, and then at that point, you know, there's many things that they that their auto insurance a trusted advisor will, will take them through, um, walk them kind of through. Um, we, we have basically our process that we, and the questions that we ask um, um, that are gonna be impactful or um, some of these, this auto reform, the changes, um, whether they're or not, they're, they're going to impact um, each specific individual family or business. Okay, perfect. Okay, so we'll get those two things. Uh, and then the best thing to do is just call and make an appointment with our, um, with our insurance person, correct? Absolutely. Okay, perfect. So now if we have more questions, if we have more information, or if we're shopping around for, for maybe a new policy, we're not happy with the one that we have, or we're, you know, we're always looking for better rates, where can we, we, where can we call you at? <laughs> sure. Well, you can always contact our office. Um, um, our office not line is 989-631-4990. Um, you can visit us uh, online if you were to um, search uh, Farm Bureau Insurance, uh, Adam Suter um, or Suter Agency, uh, you'll find us. Um, and then you can also uh, reach us by email uh, as well. And uh, we're happy to, myself and my staff and team uh, are happy to answer any questions, um, even if it's just, you know, generic questions uh, regarding uh, the auto reform or in any other way that we can help you uh, possible. Okay, perfect. And just so everybody knows, I'll link to those in the show notes. That way it's really easy show notes. You can tell I'm a podcaster. I'll link to those below uh, since we're on YouTube, just to make sure that um, those are just one click away. And uh, that's great. So thank you so much, Adam. I appreciate you being here today. Um, and everybody listening, feel free to reach out for any questions that you have, um, especially uh, regarding these changes and, and seeing what you can do um, to make sure that you're having the right coverage for your family. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Yep. You're welcome. You guys have a great day. I know.